Hey you guys, it's Rachel here with Sense of Tempo County Corso. So I wanted to do some um, some behavioral work with my dogs. And I want to show you guys what I'm doing, what I'm seeing. So um, what I had out was Hefe and Preacher and the little boys here, the younger boys, Primo and, um, <clears throat> and Don Juan. So they're going to feel like they have more authority, more position right now than my Mortigan because they've been out. Okay. And my Mortigan's the last to join. And so you can see here the Hefe is kind of, you know, kind of invading his space a little bit. Um, kind of watching him back over here. Let's go. Come. And so, uh, and, and my Mortigan, ah, ah, come on, let's go. Back over here, come. Actually, they kind of have a good idea of going into the shade. Madman, this way. So, preacher, yeah. So, do you, now, cut it out. Quit it. So, preacher is steady trying to start stuff with Matt Mortigan right now. His hackles are up. His eyes are really pointy and forward. He's eyeballing him, giving him, um, giving him side eye. Because, um, and he doesn't like how hyper Matt Mortigan's being. Because my Mortigan, okay, so there you go, see? So my Mortigan was also being kind of alpha. You see how his tail is up real high like that? Hackles are up. See, Preacher's hackles are up real high right now. <clears throat> Quit it. Cut it out. So my Mortigan is trying to um, size up with um, Preacher. And I'm just going to keep an eye on him. Don Juan is kind of trying to desensitize everything or kind of de-escalate things. Shh, quit it. Shh, quit it. Now you see his tail go down? So now we're starting to get some more. Cut it out. You cut it out. Quit it. Quit it. Cut it out. Cut it out. Ah, ah, ah. You leave it. Leave it. So he, seeing me get onto Matt Mortigan, wanted to then basically be like, yeah, and you better listen to her. You know what I mean? He was trying to do that kind of thing, which is really unnecessary because if I'm trying to de-escalate things, I don't need him making them worse again. You know what I mean? Bringing the tension back up again. So there's a little play bow from him. Here's Mona. Got Mona in there. So my Mortigan's being respectful. He's got his tail up still. He's prancing. He's being a proud man. And um, Preacher's out here doing perimeter checks. Making sure that everybody knows, even if it's number two. Hi, Mona. Hey, Mona, baby girl. Hey, baby. What you get, good girl? What you good girl? Yeah. What'd you good girl? She's a pretty girl. Can't wait till she um, comes back into season. I'm gonna put her to Hefe. There's little Don Juan. Don Juan and um, and um, Primo. Preacher's checking out Primo. Primo's a tall boy. Then again, so is Don Juan to be as big as he is, because he's as big as him, but he's, he's uh, I want to say a couple months younger. Good boy, madman. Good boy. Or you're not madman. Yeah, you are madman. Jesus. I thought, I don't know why I thought that I called him the B-man. So I have madman, B-man. I didn't even realize how similar those are. And then the preacher man. <laughs> oh, well. Good boy. A little bit of tension there from Preacher. A little bit of tension. Wasn't quite too comfortable being that close with Madman. Madman is over here wanting to play with a stick now. He's decided that... That, uh... 
that he's going to play, which is good. Preacher's still being serious, still watching, um, hasn't forgotten, is feeling the need to mark everywhere to reassure everybody who the real boss is here in his eyes. Uh, <clears throat> and specifically, Batista's kennel, which is not by accident. Because <clears throat> this is where Batista is at when he's out, which he's usually out. But I'm fixing to go pick up Savannah. And I don't like... Look at the structure on him. I don't like my dogs being out when I'm not here. <whistles> until I get... Until I secure them properly. I gotta... I'm gonna have to, like, cement around here. Preacher, okay, you've made your point. Get out of there. Let's go. Cut it out. Psh, get out of it. Go. She ain't even in heat. She ain't even in heat, dude. So you can just... Preacher, cut it out. That's right. I'm glad you got knocked down. Cut it out. Go away. Go away. Hello, baby. Hello. Hello, baby. Yeah. Yeah. She's such a sugar bear. I can't have her out right now, though, because um, I don't want to create more tension. And specifically because I often put her out with my Mortigan. He may feel that she's a possession of his. And... Um, that his that that may he you know, he may feel that that's his female, and um, and so he, hey, sh mad man. Sh so my Mortigan tried to use that opportunity to flex. See that tail up like that now. So that's why it's important to never let your guard down too much, and that's why Preacher specifically got. Hey, psh, Hefe, leave it. Get out of it. You cut it out. You go play somewhere else. Preacher, come here. So Hefe is causing causing an issue because of his hyperness, which is why Preacher got onto him the way he did. Preacher skid. Teach him a lesson. <clears throat> Make sure he knows. See how see how my Mortigan is taking every opportunity to get in on that while he can, unnoticed. Oh Lord. Don Juan. And Don Juan recognizing that he's flexing is trying to kind of like be friends with him. You see him smelling him. So he's just checking out his hormones. And um, so he's recognized that he wants to be friends with Madman because he thinks that somehow that's going to work out to his benefit. And so, and maybe it's just that he just thinks he needs to be friends with everybody. You know what I mean? That's a very common trait to have. But it's important, though, that you never really relax around your males. Because just because they're behaving themselves doesn't mean that there's not underlying. You see how that tail is up like that? It's not relaxed. Go. Go. Now. Go. So for him, quit it. No. Not yours. Go. Now. Go. Go. No. So he's trying to take a stick. Go. Now. Get. No. Ah. No. Mine. Go. No, sir. There's all kinds of sticks. Go away. No. Quit. So he's getting mad at, at Don Juan. At Hefe, so Hefe, um, he, uh, my Mortigan wanted to take his stick, and Hefe, see, look at that. So Don Juan was successfully able to de-escalate that with play. See how the tail is still up, and they're running him out. The preacher's actually guarding it now, angry. <clears throat> yeah, I'm gonna let him take that one. He wants to flex with it, which is fine. Now that, now that, because nobody had it, right? So that's why he can take it, because nobody had that stick. So I can let him have that stick, because nobody was touching it. He didn't take it from somebody. I could not let him take to try to take it from one of my other two males, because it was their possession at the time and could very well have started a fight. And so as much as he wanted to, I was not about to let him try to flex on them by taking their stick. And so I redirected, redirected until he was able to take 
an unowned stick. You see him walk by like that? So when they walk by real close in the front like that, and he's got his tail up like that, that's just another way where they try to flex. And thing about it is, is I don't mind if they silently flex. I'm okay with that, so long as it doesn't escalate. Like, you know, I'll let that go so long as he doesn't keep doing it and keep being disrespectful or kind of, um, like, for example, when I walked over, the first thing he did wrong is when you have two males that are laying down um, in a more kind of vulnerable position, they don't want a big, um, you know, male coming up, um, tail up high, just getting it on their space like that. It's disrespectful. And because if they, if that dog did decide to do something, they would be at a disadvantage and they don't like to put each other in situations. It's not respectful to put one another in those situations. So, um, so you see how my morning is slightly mirroring preacher right now, which preacher got annoyed by. And then my Mortigan stopped it. Like he didn't stop it. He got annoyed and then showed it. And then the other dog went away. And now Hefe is being annoying. See him smelling him. So he's trying to basically be like, oh, I'm your partner. I'm your, you know, I'm your grandson. I love you. <clears throat> That's what that is. Just reassuring their bond. Preacher, they're doing a serious moment. It's kind of cute, actually. Oh, don't be like that phone. You suck now, don't you? I have to like snap on it. I have to like hit my phone. Be like, work! See, so he's not in the mood. He's not. Preacher's not in the mood. And the reason for that is because <laughs> that kind of behavior that Hefe is doing can actually lead to my Mortigan trying to come in and cause a problem. You know what I mean? And Preacher wants to be very clear. He's going to be, I'm a stoic. I'm a stoic, manly man. I'm not going to play. I don't play. Now's not the time, young son. Grandson. See that tail up? That stiff leg walking. You know, ears back. Because we're back over here. You'll find that when when uh, they're listen when they're watching each other, you see how his ears are constantly turned towards us. And there goes Madman. He's going to pee where Preacher just peed. If he's feeling like a real man, let's see if he does. Depends on how manly he's feeling. And there you go, gonna pee on his peak because he thinks that he's manlier than Preacher. That's literally what that is, is he's trying to cover up Preacher's smell. Look at him, he's gonna probably do it again if he's super, you know, and now he's gonna come over, he's gonna tail up, getting in his space, face to face, which is very disrespectful. Even if it's only chewing on the grass. Now his tail did go down a little bit. But just that just that incursion of space there. Now you'll see here the tails tell a lot, right? So Preacher's tail is higher than his at the time. But do you see how he keeps getting in his way? It's this very passive-aggressive way of really just being in his space and being annoying. And um, kind of taking what he's taking, moving him along. You know, and moving preacher by constantly getting in his space. See that? Mad Mortigan, you get over here and you cut it out. And so the only option in that situation is some would say, well, why are you getting involved in that? Why don't you let them work it out? Well, working it out is very dangerous because dogs work things out by fighting and trying to kill each other. And, you know, I obviously cannot have that. So I have to step in and, um, and handle that. And, and, and the thing about it is it doesn't need to be 100% natural because this setup is not 100% natural. Most people don't have, you know, or not even most people. In the wild, there are not a bunch of males living together, you know. Um, it's not like stallions with bachelor herds, right? It just, it's not the way it is. Even with lions, they'll have, you know, two, like a coalition. They're typically brothers. Um, although they can be unrelated, but you, most, most of the time their brothers are from the same pride, like half-brothers things like that cousins siblings whatever so this is a completely unnatural setup which is why it shouldn't be um you know weird to you to see that i um am doing things that would be considered unnatural by stepping in whenever i see something like that because if preacher's unwilling to give up his position which we can judge by his behavior that he's clearly not then there's no point and them continuing things um, because it can only lead to uh, an eventual fight, which is not something that 
um, which is not something that I'm willing to allow to happen. Like my dogs, the, the biggest rule in my house is no fighting. That's, that's the golden rule, no fighting. So, you know, and that's how I managed to keep them together. Um, only difference is, is like, um, for example, like Batista, he can't be out here because, I mean, that's not true. Like I've thought about it and it's like, yeah, if I had an e-collar on him, you know, I could prevent him from fighting because it's not when he's right in front of me that I'm worried about it. It's like when they're running around or whatever, playing around or whatever, that's when it would become a problem. When I can't get to him in time, that would be a problem. So you see there, you see that real high tail when, when Hefe walked by. My Mortigan Hefe is not willing in any way, shape or form to give my Mortigan anything. And, um, which is odd because... Um, see that real high, real high. It, it's almost, it's almost like in, it's just the youth of it. You know what I mean? That is, that is bona fide immaturity of like, you know, it's, it's borderline cocky. You know what I mean? He's just like, look at me. I'm a big, strong man. I don't respect you at all. You know, in fact, I hate you. It's like that, you know, it's a bit much. <clears throat> yeah, we see you, dude. We see you, dude. Yeah, he has a, a bark collar on, by the way, in case you didn't notice. It's not a, I don't have anything where I would be, or it would have been a whole lot easier out here to, ma to manage him, to make him stop if I had a remote to that thing right now, but I don't. It's just to keep the barking down for my neighbors because I don't want a bunch of barking dogs. Ah, 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 primo. What you doing, boy? Come. Good boy, primo. Hey, Don, dude, don't do that. Good boy, Primo. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Yes, you're a good boy. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. You're a pretty Italian Labrador. That's what you are. Yes, you are. Tuka, 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 tuka. Just joking. He's not actually a Labrador. I always have to reiterate that because people, when I say that, people actually think that I mean it. Preacher. So, and the cool thing about these boys being out is they're getting to see all of this stuff. They're getting to watch how males are able to work things out without fighting, which is really important because for them to be able to coexist, um, they're also going to need that information. They're going to need to know how to work that kind of stuff out. So it's important for them to be out here to witness that stuff um, at the same time as, as the other dogs that are, you know, actually going through it. So look at my Mortigan going out there to Preacher. See, Preacher wants to poop in peace. I think I think my Mortigan realized it at the last second. He's like, oh, he's pooping. He thought he was gonna like do something else. Primo, <laughs> where you think you're going? <laughs> Come on, Poppy. <laughs> Good boy. Good boy. Maybe he's not, but he's he's definitely watching. So you'll see, if you watch closely at my Mortigan's face and you watch his eyes, he's gonna constantly be looking for Preacher. Ah, ah, ah. Back over here. Come, Don Juan. So look, boom, 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 there he is. Disrespectful approach to to the alpha man. Ah, ah, Hefe, get out of that. You leave him alone. Let him poop in peace. Why, that was so rude. See, that's just immaturity right there. Like, there's no, there's no reason to dominate a puppy while they're pooping. That's purely immaturity on his part right there. He just, he wants to be a man so bad and he just doesn't know the first thing about how to do it. Don't it want it? Donnie Wonnie! Yeah, but I mean, it's whatever. He's kind of teaching him. They're both all learning. As part of growing up is, is, is getting, is finally starting to feel your oats and then going a little overboard. You know, it's part of it. And then you learn. Somebody puts you in place and then you learn to be a little bit more humble. So... And that may eventually be Preacher, because Preacher has been getting a little tired of his crap. So, you see that? You see how Preacher followed him? You see that? There's just a stillness there. The tail doesn't move. It's rigid. Um, we'll just see it. 
He walks with purpose. Every step with assured purpose. Oh, Lord. Hefe, ain't nothing with purpose with you. You're a wild cannon. Oh, I'm going to tell you guys. So, um, so I, I want to see. Oh, look at that. See, communication. He says, back off. So, and Don Juan's a respectful boy, and he did. Um, whoa, dude. So, uh, Reese's husband has a thing over here, a mineral block, and he, he hunts over there. So, he came over here while I wasn't here and um, pulled the truck all the way back in here. And, and I had um, Hefe in a kennel um, at the front of the house. And, and uh, Hefe got out of the kennel. And um, came and found him, tracked him down and found him. And um, and like literally barely let him make it. Like was just on him um, like glue the whole time. And I think the only reason why he, he didn't was because he knew him. You know what I mean? He knows Reese's husband. And, and he, said, he said at first he didn't think he was going to make it. And then he kept just saying his name, saying his name. And he said he wagged his tail. But that he still wouldn't like, you know, he still wouldn't you know, wasn't okay with it. And so he finally got into his truck. He was able to get into his truck and um, he was waiting on me because he didn't want to leave with him out. And, um, and he said he had to whisper because every time that Hefe would hear him talking in the truck, he would go off again. <laughs> it was pretty funny. So, um, anyway, see if my Mortigan wasn't out here right now, I bet you anything that preacher would check Hefe for how rough he's being with this puppy. But he doesn't want to let his guard down. You see how he's just standing here? He doesn't. He's watching. He doesn't. He wants my Mortigan to know that, that at no point is he going to get one over on him. He is watching. He's the man. He's ready for all challenges. And he's just stoically standing and watching and proud. He's like, I'm the man. Make no question. This is who I am. And, and, um... You know, and you're not going to get one on me. Good boy. You see him looking at me. Yeah. Anyway. Well, I'm going to let y'all go. I'm going to, um, oh, there he goes. He's like, I got a stick. I'm a man. See, look at that. Ooh. Oh, all right. See? Hefe, let it go. So, and then you have to question... And, and see, that's why I said the, the tail, the way he was doing it was borderline immaturity. It's almost fake. It's almost, it's like, it's like, um, oh, look at that. So he didn't like that. He got too, he got too proud with it. He was mocking him. He's like, look, haha, I took your stick. And he's like, uh-uh, dude, that ain't right. Look at him. He's like, he's like, wait, yeah, he thought better of it. But look at the tail. Look at the tail. Look at the tail. <laughs> oh, he's not quite there. He's a. Uh, He's a shadow of the man he's going to be. Look at him. Now he's going to... Now now because he's... Yeah, now because he's feeling weak, he's going to go pick on somebody weaker than him. Yeah, classic. Classic. And this guy just gives it up. He's like, oh, God, I don't know what I did, but sorry, you're mad. <laughs> oh, Lord. Anyway, all right. Well, y'all have a good day, and I'll talk at you later. Bye.